This is a video showing my overhead charger install. I'm going to show you kind of what I did with that and how it, you know, how it basically works. I'll include links below to some of the parts I used and the uh, 3D printed uh, parts that you know you can use to attach your uh, charger to the ceiling. Uh, one thing is this is specifically for the Emporia charger. Uh, obviously, if you have the same diameter of cable, everything would work as is. If you don't, you would probably have to make some modifications to the, you know, to the 3D print. Finally, I don't know how well this holds up in the summer. I printed it using PLA, so it might not hold up really well, you know, once we get to the hot summers here. I'm hoping it will, but you never know. So first thing is, uh, so this is the charge port here. And you can see I've aligned this as close as possible to the charge port. Now I am gonna make some improvements to this. There is a little bit of pull on the cable and a little bit of a bend as you can see. Um, and I sometimes have to adjust it a little bit. I am planning on kind of moving the cable a little bit and maybe making it so that it's not as easy to slide this thing around on the cable. Uh, it works pretty well. It's nice that it's like hanging right here free charge. I don't have to charge inside my garage too often, but when I do, it is it is handy. When we get a second electric car, I'm hoping it has a left rear plug, and then it would be, you know, essentially right across and be easy to plug in. Now let's take a look at the 3D print here. So if you go up here, uh, you can see here I've taken a 3D print and inserted some uh, nuts into it and attached it using screws. So if we go around to the other side, we'll see, hopefully, yeah, you can see the, the screw heads. These are just, you know, screws I had laying around. Uh, I think the 2M or 3M screws, uh, metric obviously, used for my 3D printer. And then on top here, we have a kind of a hole that I attach a carabiner to that I got from Harbor Freight, and I'll include that. It seems like the easiest way to connect and disconnect. And finally, at the top, we have a, uh, I guess it's a, I can't remember, a spring, uh, a spring, I can't remember. It's, it's like a tool spring holder. So basically it, you can, it kind of has some tension on it and you can pull it down fairly easily and let it go. I actually need to add a little bit more weight to it to make it easier to, to pull down, but you can see it just hangs there and a spring balancer, there it is, yeah. So spring balancer, and you can see here that it's not, you know, it's not all the way up, but it's not all the way down. Obviously, I could adjust it a little bit more and put a little bit more weight on and make it easier to move up and down. So far, it hasn't broken though, so that's the most important thing. And then I basically printed more of these things, as you can see up here, and I used some, rope, uh, some uh, metal rope. Uh, this one's probably the best one. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. So I used some metal rope and some ties with a carabiner on it to attach to these 3D printed uh, connectors or strain reliefs that I, I made. And I also used some bungee cords, as you can see here. I've, in some cases, these bungee cords just worked out the best because they were easy to move around. And finally, we'll go back to our uh, charger here. And this one, I was fortunate that I had a sub panel here that could support the storage charger. It was plugged in right next to the, uh, you know, the charger. And it happened to be very close to my safe rack here to be able to just run the cable up and over. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more and see if, let's see if I can do a, a dynamic zoom. There we go. So now we're a little bit more zoomed out and you can kind of see the cable running over and down and to the car. And it, um, you know, it fits really well in this garage. Again, it was, it, this is a pretty tall ceiling. I think it's like 12 foot ceiling in this garage. But because I had the safe racks up there, it was super easy to just run the cable across at a fairly low, you know, uh, it's a fairly low and accessible part, but out of the way for most 
things that you're gonna do in your side of your garage. And along with that, uh, you know, you don't need an ex extremely long cable. This one has a 24 foot cable to get to your, you know, from the box of the car. And I had plenty of cable to get there. I could probably have run it to the, maybe to the back. I could have definitely gotten to the back uh, driver's side, but maybe not the rear passenger side of the car with this. Uh, again, I'll include links in the description below for the materials I use, the 3D print, uh, strain reliefs and attachments, as well as the stuff I got from Harbor Freight and on Amazon if you want to do a setup like this, as uh, a number of people really wanted to, I guess, see what I did with this and uh, possibly make their own in there for their garage. So far, uh, I'll just add here, so far I'm really enjoying the Mach-E. I think the only negatives I, I really have with the car is the uh, fact that it could charge a little bit faster on fast charging. And I think that's unfortunate that they didn't put in 800 volt architecture in this car or in the, especially in their truck. But I think that was maybe an oversight that they made when they were starting the design process here. Um, thank you.